A while ago, I talked about why I thought Toy Story 2 was an amazing sequel and just a great movie overall, but I haven't yet talked about the other three Toy Story movies. And because I love this franchise so much, I full well intend to discuss all of them. But instead of going to one of the other two sequels, I'd like to take a step back and talk about the first Toy Story movie instead, and why I think that it is the perfect and ultimate tale of friendship. Such a basic theme that is common in so many different stories, and yet, no no story has ever done a tale of friendship as good as Toy Story, you know, at least that I've seen anyways. And so I thought, why not make a video trying to explain why? It's totally not because my Pixar videos always perform better than the other videos I upload to this channel or anything. <laughs> anyway, Woody is probably one of my favorite fictional characters of all time, and that is because of the intense character development he goes through in all three of the original movies. The fourth one is a little bit different though, and uh, we'll get to that one eventually. But as for how he is in this movie, one thing I really appreciate about his character is how he isn't really that lovable hero that everyone knows him as yet. He's actually quite selfish and stubborn at the start of this movie, and it primarily stems from the fact that he has influence and power. And as far as we know, Woody has never not had the influence and power that he currently has, because ever since he has been here, he has been Andy's favorite toy. And by being Andy's favorite toy, it puts him in a position of influence and power over all the other toys. And so whether he realizes it or not, he has come to believe that he is actually better than the other toys. But what makes his dynamic with the other toys so interesting and, and not some sort of villainous role, like he was actually originally intended to be before they changed the script, is that the other toys, for the most part, like and respect him because he treats them all well. However, as we will soon discover, the primary reason why he treats everyone well is because he has never seen anyone as a threat to his power. They've always been quote unquote beneath him, and so he has always felt this need to take care of everyone else, to be the leader. And while he is very good at doing that job, the fact that he has never been challenged has caused his ego to become inflated. As soon as Buzz shows up, he doesn't do anything wrong, he just introduces introduces himself to the other toys, but Woody, having seen that he took his place, immediately becomes paranoid of the idea of being replaced, something he ironically told everyone else wouldn't happen. But that's because he's never thought anyone could ever replace him. He only saw the other toys as being replaceable, and would be the one to step up to defend them. But who's going to defend him if he's already the best? And I just love the subtle touch of how Woody is constantly trying to put Buzz down in his first introduction without ever explicitly stating so, as his first thought is to make Buzz out to be lesser than him so that no one thinks that he could be better or take his place. And when this fails, Woody feels genuine fear for the first time. All who gain power are afraid to lose it. And this is when the song Strange Things plays, which is not just a really solid song on its own, but has a clever twist to it if you pay attention. Because you see, the song itself uses the unreliable narrator trope, in which something is being said as fact, when in reality, it is actually only the perspective and opinion of a single character. Not only is this song the proof that we know that Woody has never had to encounter a situation where someone was seen on the same level as him before, but it also reveals to us how Woody sees his own power and influence, in a way that reveals that it is not nearly as strong as he thinks it is. Because the song claims that he had all these great things before, but not anymore. But just because Buzz showed up doesn't mean he no longer has power or respect, unless of course he never actually had that in the first place, and people only presumed that he had power and respect because he was the only one on that same level, being Andy's favorite toy. But now that there's someone else, Woody perceives that all his power and respect is gone because people only pay attention to Buzz Lightyear now. Respect is not something you lose by someone else supposedly better than you showing up and taking it all away. If someone truly respects you, then they'll respect you so long as you don't contradict the aspects of yourself that they respect. You can perfectly see this dynamic through many of the other toys. On one end, you have someone like Bo Peep, who clearly actually does respect Woody, because even after he knocks Buzz out the window and becomes lost, she hasn't turned against him, and gives him the benefit of the doubt that it really was a mistake, because she trusts what he says. Then you have someone like Slinky, who did seem to have some level of respect for Woody before, but this level of respect was lost when he saw that Woody seemed to contradict himself with everything that he did and said against Buzz Lightyear. And of course, on the complete other end of the spectrum from Bo Peep is someone like Mr. Potato Head, who never respected Woody, and always saw his level of power and influence as something 
something that was not really as strong as Woody had made it out to be. Another great example of how Woody's respect and power was never as strong as he believed it was comes right after the song Strange Things, where the shark character takes Woody's hat and mocks him with it. If Woody really was as perfect as he thought he was, then other toys like this shark wouldn't so easily be making fun of him. And speaking of Buzz, one thing I really like about him is how just like Woody, he has some sort of prominent character flaw. The fact that he can't see that he isn't just a toy and actually thinks he's a space ranger. Making it so that neither of the main characters are perfectly in the right or completely in the wrong. And another thing that makes Buzz work so well as a character is that his delusion that he is a space ranger isn't his only flaw, because he's also very stubborn as well. Because he is so determined to prove that he's actually a space ranger, he fails to see that Woody is simply trying to tell him the truth of his reality and he instead takes it as a personal attack on his character. Of course, Woody wasn't exactly relaying this information in the right way, but Buzz is in the wrong when it comes to hearing out other points of view that contradict his own. And this causes him to reject the idea of Woody ever becoming his friend quite early on. And I also love the small progression of how Woody sees Buzz's belief that he's a space ranger, first thinking it's all just an act and playing it up to make himself look cool. He's not a space ranger! He doesn't fight evil or, or shoot lasers or fly! But then realizing that he genuinely actually believes it and using this as a chance to mock him and once again try to make him look lesser than himself. Hey guys, look! It's the real Buzz Lightyear! And of course when they get lost, just completely losing it because he can't stand it anymore. According to my Nava computer, the- Shut up! Just shut up, you idiot! And speaking of getting lost, one thing I really like about the part where Woody knocks Buzz out the window is that it both was intentional and an accident at the same time. This is genius because it causes Woody to know that he is guilty, but also be able to trick himself into believing that he wasn't guilty because it kind of was an accident. How am I gonna convince those guys it was an accident? thus creating a great inner conflict in him that continues to boil up until the climax of the film. Another thing that this scene reveals to us is something that many people seem to forget, that all these other toys in Andy's room aren't actually Woody's friends, at least not true friends of his, because if they were, then they wouldn't have tried to throw him out the window, fearing for their lives. It shows that Woody's assumed power and influence over them isn't as strong as he actually thought because he never actually took the time to build a true relationship with any of them, well, except maybe Bo Peep. Another great thing about this Woody knocking Buzz outside the window scene is that even though Woody basically got what he wanted, being taken by Andy to Pizza Planet instead of Buzz, he isn't actually satisfied or happy because of the fact that all the other toys turned on him, and so neither character actually gets what they wanted. Having both Woody and Buzz become lost and separated from Andy and all the other toys is a perfect way of forcing Woody into a situation where he can't get what he wants without Buzz Lightyear or else no one will believe him. And all throughout this scene at the gas station, the only thing Woody ever thinks about is how he's going to fix his problem, how he's going to get back, what's going to happen to him, completely all self-absorbed thoughts. He doesn't care a smidge about Buzz Lightyear. He's just a tool for him to use to get back to where he was and regain his reputation and power. Meanwhile, Buzz, while technically still delusional over the idea of being a space ranger, actually does care. He cares about saving the entire universe, even if there isn't actually anyone to save and there's nothing he could really do because it's all fictional. The fact of the matter is the mindset of the two characters. The problem is neither mindset is actually going to help them get what they want or overcome their flaws. And of course, Woody finds this out the hard way at Pizza Planet, where both of them focusing exclusively on their own goals gets them into trouble instead of fixing the problem. And now we've reached the part where Buzz and Woody end up in Sid's house. Now this originally used to be my least favorite part of the movie, since most of the funniest parts are in the first half and this was the slowest part of the movie overall, but these days I've kind of reversed my opinion, while the first half is still just as good as it always was, the second half might actually be the superior half of the movie in my opinion. And this is because it's not until this point when Buzz and Woody finally realize their flaws laws and the only way to overcome them. Due to the fact that they are now in the worst situation they've ever been in, they basically have to rely on each other to get out of situations. But even still, they continue to be stubborn. At least, until Buzz finally realizes the truth about what he really is, and completely loses all sense of reality in the process. 
because the problem is, he now realizes that the person he's been constantly arguing with this entire time has been right. And then everything he thought he believed was wrong. And now he has no sense of purpose whatsoever. And unfortunately for him, Woody's main priority is still just getting back to Andy's house. And it's not until he fails to convince the others that Buzz is his friend now that he finally realizes that there's nothing he can do. Oh, and also, this ties back to the part where the toys tried to throw him out the window, proving that they weren't truly his friends after all. And it is here when Woody finally realizes that they aren't truly his friends as he thought they were because his concept of what made someone his friend was based on the idea of whether they liked him or not. Not a mutually beneficial relationship between both parties. And unfortunately for him, his misconceptions have left him lonelier than ever. In his mind, he was so certain that just bringing Buzz back or some sort of proof that Buzz really wasn't pushed out the window by him would get back everything he thought he had. But this lie he's been telling himself finally proves to hold no weight whatsoever when it is put to the test. And so now, in their darkest moment, when both characters believe that there's nothing left for either of them, they finally realize the value in what each other had that they didn't. And as Woody finally reveals the truth in that he thought he could never be as good as Buzz, this causes Buzz to realize that all of Woody's actions were not because he disliked him, but because he was afraid of losing something. And that this idea that he had no value whatsoever if he wasn't really a space ranger couldn't possibly be true if Woody saw so much value in him that he was afraid that he would replace him. And it finally becomes clear to him that being a toy is actually a good thing. And if it weren't for the hardships he went through with Woody, he never would have realized that. And Woody, now finally having given up trying to prove that he's better than Buzz because he realizes that it is all pointless in the end, finally starts to see the value in Buzz. The primary thing that was stopping them from being friends before. Fear makes companions of all of us. And one of my favorite things about how Buzz and Woody finally become friends at this moment is that it all ties back to how Andy treated both of them. And even though Woody is Andy's favorite toy, he values all the toys still the same. When Woody was the only toy there, Andy loved him unconditionally, and Woody unconditionally loved him back. And Andy's unconditional love for Woody is proven in Toy Story 2 when he chooses to still love him and play with him even though his arm got ripped. And Andy was the only person in the entire house who Woody saw as superior to him. And when he became lost, both Andy and Woody were worried about each other's safety because they both cared about each other in this relationship. Unlike how Woody treated Buzz, where he immediately tried to put him down instead of offering his hand out in friendship, he chose to love him conditionally only if he submitted to him and did not take away his power or influence. And as we can see when Woody and Buzz do eventually get back to Andy, he is equally thrilled to have found both of them because he doesn't actually value Woody or Buzz more than the other as Woody had feared but he cares about them equally. And it should also be noted as well that even though he doesn't show it as much in the first two movies, Andy also clearly really cares about the other toys as well, since he is so unwilling to get rid of them in Toy Story 3. Well, except for a couple of forgettable side characters, but uh, that's not the point. It all comes back to the fact that he's never known a world where someone was treated the same as him. He was always above everyone else. And as soon as someone else comes to challenge that position, it causes him to act illogically. It is Woody's irrational fear of losing something that he already has that got them into this situation in the first place, but it is a rational fear of true danger that finally causes him and Buzz to come together in the end. Woody was so focused on what he had to lose that he never considered what he had to gain instead. However, in the end, all these things combined together, along with the fact that they had to go through so many trials and tribulations together, many of which they would not have overcome if it weren't for each of them using their unique abilities in each situation that the other one couldn't do. Something I said in my Monsters University video a while back that equally applies to this movie, if not even more so, is that the strongest bonds are those that are forged in fire. It's because they had to go through so many hardships together that they know they can trust each other in the end. Oh, and did I mention the main theme of this movie? You got a friend in me. Yes. That one. Which is not just a perfect main theme for this movie because of the fact that it's a song about friendship and the whole theme of the movie is about being a true friend and what that actually means. One of the most clever things about this song is how it plays at the beginning with Woody and Andy and so you think it must be referring to them. But the lyrics more so match the journey that Buzz and Woody go through on this adventure. And both of these points are actually very deliberate because it shows us that Woody needs to make a friendship the strength of the one that he has with Andy with Buzz 
dies, or he'll never make it through to the end. But on top of that, the way it is worded is also really clever in my opinion. Because it's not, you are my friend, it's you've got a friend in me. And the key difference here being that you have to be a friend to someone else before they'll be a friend back to you. It's a matter of trust. It has to go both ways or it doesn't work. Someone can say that they're your friend, but it doesn't actually mean anything if they don't actually stick up to that. One-sided relationships, where you only rely on other people to do things for you, it's not what makes a true friend at all. And that's why having the song say, you are my friend, would feel so much more empty than you've got a friend in me. Because it would be the equivalent of calling someone else a friend without them returning the favor back. And of course, that's not the only clever lyric. There's other stuff, like how it says, you've got troubles and I've got them too. But if we stick together, we can see it through. And that there isn't anything I wouldn't do for you. It's a completely selfless song, which perfectly encapsulates everything it means to be a true friend. And all this pays off in the end when Woody realizes that, now that the other toys don't believe him, the only person who he truly trusts and who can trust him back is Buzz, and he refuses to leave without saving him. Which of course leads to this absolutely outstanding scene. We toys can see I get goosebumps every time. And also, something I really like about this part where after defeating Sid, Buzz gets stuck on the fence, but Woody has the opportunity to escape back to Andy's house. He doesn't go back to save Buzz out of obligation. He does so because he genuinely cares and doesn't want to leave Buzz behind, showing just how much he's changed since they first met. It's only now, when Woody is putting all his energy and effort into saving Buzz Lightyear, that the other toys finally realize that he actually does care, and that if he could come to a point where he considers Buzz a true friend and would do anything to save him and not leave him behind, then they can once again finally trust him. And by the time the next movie starts, he'll have actually made true bonds and relationships with all the other toys, showing just how important this entire adventure was for him as a person, and not just his relationship with Buzz, but his relationship with everyone. And lastly, as the cherry on top of the whole story, the only way that Woody is able to gain back the reputation and power that he lost is to do the one thing he should have done in the first place. Befriend Buzz Lightyear and treat him as an equal to everyone else. Oh, and also uh, not see himself as superior to the other toys either. And well, that is why I believe Toy Story is one of the greatest tales of friendship ever told and is still one of the greatest animated movies ever made, in my opinion. I mean, imagine if this movie was bad. Traditional animation would probably still be alive. Wait, that's a good thing. Well, now I would like to know what all of you think about Toy Story in the comments down below, and if you think there is some sort of better story of friendship in another movie or show that I haven't talked about or can't remember off the top of my head. If you enjoyed the video, then you can do more than just like and subscribe. You could also follow me on several social media platforms that I appear on, links in the description down below. I'd also like to remind you to check out my gaming channel, where I post gaming videos occasionally, not super often, but I do whenever I can find the time to edit them. Link in the description down below. And if you want to support me in a way further than just my own videos, then I have a Patreon, which you can subscribe to, where you can see early videos and also get your name shouted out in the credits, just like these people. Ed, Tyke, Macabre Mole, In7X Voss, and Connor Harris. Or if you're not interested in Patreon, you could also support me by becoming a channel member. Doing so will give you a little badge next to your name, as well as getting a shout out at the end of my videos just like the patrons. A big thank you to Samir A, Edward P, Emperor Roku, and Calabunga. But wait! You there! Don't leave this video just yet, there's more great Rockotar content for you to check out, such as this video over here, where I talk about the villain Syndrome from The Incredibles. Or perhaps this video over here, which is another Toy Story related video, that being my analysis of Toy Story 2. Both are great videos if you have time to watch them. But most importantly of all, always remember to stay iconic.